The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good morning and welcome to the service of worship today at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church on this, the first Sunday of October. It's wonderful to see all of you here, especially if you're a guest with us today. We welcome you. We hope you find this time of worship and encounter with the living, loving God. Uh, I invite everyone, if you would, take a minute and sign the fellowship pads. You'll find those along the center aisle of your pew. And on this, the first Sunday of October, it's also it's World Communion Sunday, but it's also our Friends and Neighbors Day. And so if you're a friend or neighbor with us today, welcome. We're glad you are here. Uh, we, have some special, we have a special lunch planned after church. You're all welcome to join us in the fellowship hall for that. And then the kids are invited. I, the inflatable guys just showed up before worship. So the inflatable bounce houses will be out on the front lawn after worship. Those are for the children, folks, not for the adults. Um, but we hope that'll be a fun time for those all and, and appreciate you being here and a chance to join together uh, in fellowship together. Let me mention a couple other announcements uh, that in terms of our life together here at Western Boulevard. Uh, just a reminder that because we're having Friends and Neighbors Day today, we are not going to have Wednesday Night Live this Wednesday. It will, we will not have Wednesday Night Live. You can come Wednesday evening, but there won't be any food around. Um, but you can come and help with the soccer practice that'll be out on the field. Uh, they will appreciate that. Uh, we will have next Sunday, October 13th, come before Sunday school at 9 o'clock, and we'll have breakfast for you. Our kitchen crew will have a uh, hot breakfast for all. You don't have to RSVP, just come. Uh, so that'll be next Sunday at 9 o'clock. And then the following Wednesday on October 16th, we will be having our stewardship loyalty night uh, dinner and program. So you'll see an announcement about that and ways you can sign up for that. It's going to be a special dinner. It's going to be a low country boil uh, that David Nance and Ron Pittman and the kitchen crew are going to prepare, so we're excited for that. So I hope you can join us for that activity or for that on October 16th. Let me mention a couple of announcements that aren't in uh, your bulletin. One is that um, this Saturday, October 12th, we're going to be participating again as a church with uh, Habitat for Humanity and their faith build uh, this fall. And they're going to be doing a wall build this Saturday beginning at 1030. And then the following Saturday, October 19th, is going to be another opportunity for us to volunteer and, and serve with Habitat for Humanity here of Wake County. Um, if any of you have interest in that, I would invite you after worship to see Kevin Fisher. Kevin, raise your hand. He's over here with the, with the three commanders uh, beside him. And we also will have information about that in the weekly email this Thursday as far as signups and where you can be participating. So take note of that. We hope you can join us uh, for that this Saturday and next Saturday. Another thing to remind you of is that next Sunday is the end of the Penny Games fundraiser that the youth have been doing throughout the, since the beginning of September. And there is a graph, an update on totals on the scrolling announcements out in the narthex. So for any who have interest in who ends up winning this fundraiser, NC State or Carolina, I would invite you to take a look at that. Uh, and, you, and the youth will be out in the narthex afterward. You can donate for that as well. Finally, one of the things that always happens on World Communion Sunday is we also receive and dedicate the Peace and Global Witness Offering, which is one of the four special offerings that the Presbyterian Church receives every year. And you'll see an insert in your bulletin about that, uh, and you'll also see special envelopes in your pews. Every year that offering, 25% of it is kept by the local congregation to use and designate for a local effort in our community to serve for peacemaking. And the denomination this year, uh, may, and many, many churches, are going to be using, and we as well, will be using our 25% to donate to Presbyterian disaster assistance, specifically to help our neighbors in Western North Carolina. And so I would invite you today to give as you're able and to, and to give out of generous hearts and know that that is how that portion of our offering will be designated. And we'll speak more later in the service about other ways that you can help support and we can support those who have been impacted by the torrential uh, flooding and devastation in the western part of our state this past week. Let's continue our worship. I'll invite Millie to come forward and lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Hope all is well. Please join, please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship. Mm -hmm. 
To my sisters and brothers, I will tell you glory, your glory. In the great congregation, I will sing your praise. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name. We have an advocate on high, Jesus Christ, who stooped down to save us from our sin, but rose in honor and glory to reign forever. Therefore, let us seek God's grace as we confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Loving God, you created us to live in relationship with you to love and serve one another, and to, and to care, care for all your creatures. Yet, in the hardness of our hearts, we dismiss your commandments and seek to go our separate ways. Lord, mercy on us. Redeem, restore, and recreate us. For the sake of Christ, our Savior. Amen.
What are we that God is mindful of us? Who are we that God should care for us? Yet God now calls us beloved children. Jesus now claims us as sisters and brothers. This is the good news of God's grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As the Lord has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another, share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come up and join me as we talk for a couple minutes together. Hi. How are you all? How is it going? Come on, have a seat anywhere you can find. Everyone kind of be able to come and look, see what, I'm do, what I've got, though. You may want to turn around and look and, and see. So, Miss Debbie and I got to do something really special this week. We went, to, um, we went on a trip, and we went to uh, a couple of special places. Uh, Did a bouncy house? No, I didn't get a bouncy house. That's, that's here at the church. Um, but... I, we went to two national parks. We went, well, we went to three national parks. We went to Yosemite National Park, and we went to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. Have you all heard of any of those? Maybe you've heard of Yosemite. That's very famous and know that one. And they're, and they're beautiful. They're out in California. And we were really grateful that we had the chance to go. And um, one of the things that was really special, what? Yeah. At school, I yeah. was on a field trip. You go on field trips on school? Well, we kind of went on a field trip ourselves. That's kind of what we got to do. And I'm almost in third class like my sister. Really? Yeah. So here, here's something I picked. What is this? Pine it's a pine cone. I picked this up out here in the churches in the yard. We have, we have a bunch of pine trees out here, don't we? We have a lot of big pine trees out in the front. They seem pretty big, don't they? How big do you think they are? I saw butterflies. You saw butterflies? Yeah. Yeah. How big? How tall do you think they are? Maybe. Yeah. So I'm getting off track. So these are what, what, pine, what do pine cones do? What's in them? Seeds. That's how pine trees drop their seeds and they get and they grow new trees. So, what's that? A seed. That's a that's a pine cone too, isn't it? But it's different. It looks different, doesn't it? So, would you believe me that if I told you that that pine cone can grow a tree that is fifteen hundred years old? No. That's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? But that's a pine cone from a sequoia tree. And they are smaller <laughs> than the pine cones we have out here. But I thought I'd show you how big they are. I took a picture of Miss Debbie in front of one. 
Can you find Miss Debbie? Way at the bottom. Isn't that a big tree? It's, it's like a red, they're similar to the redwood trees, but they're called sequoias, and they're actually the biggest trees in the world based on how much space they take up. And I thought we had, the, we had the real joy of walking and seeing and exploring these. And what it reminded me of, it reminded me of a redwood tree. It also reminded me of how beautiful God's creation is, how amazing this world is that we live in, and how much we need to do to protect it and to make sure that these are around for your children and your grandchildren so that they can have the same sense of awe and wonder that we experienced this past week. So I hope one day you all get the chance to see that and maybe even recognize that even around what we see all the time, we can be awed and have wonder and glory as well. We don't have to go all the way out to California to see it, okay? So I'm gonna leave these and if, and, and if anyone wants to see more pictures, ask your parents. All of them are on Facebook, on our Facebook page. So let's, have it, let's say a prayer together before we go. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the beauty that is all around us, for the reminders that you have created this world and all that is in it and have made it good. We ask, oh God, that you might stir in us a desire to do everything we can to protect it, to treasure it, and to let it be here for the generations that follow so that all might be able to live and enjoy this world you have created. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, what do we say? Okay, so today you guys are going to go back and sit with your families because you don't have children's chapels. So go back and enjoy. Have, see you next week, okay? Let us pray. Lord God, as you spoke long ago through the voices of your prophets, speak to us here. Speak to us now through the power of your spirit and the promise of your son through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis 2, reading from verse 18 to 24. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was his name. The man gave names to all cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall over the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord had given had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one is taken. Therefore, 
a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they became one flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament lesson comes from the letter to the Hebrews, from chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Let us listen for God's word. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. What does it mean to practice hospitality? What does hospitality mean to us as individuals, as Christians, and as the church? Think about what we do whenever we host someone for dinner or a night at our home. Some of us would get our houses all cleaned up. Some of us wouldn't even worry about it. <laughs> we'd shop for groceries, we'd cook a special meal, We'd make sure we have maybe wine or other libations, and we'd set the table. Or, instead of hosting a dinner at our house, we might take our guests out for dinner. 
We might make arrangements for children to be cared for, for pets to be corralled, and maybe for some games to be played after dinner. If guests were going to spend the evening at our house, we would make sure that the beds were made, that they had what they needed for their comfort, and be prepared to offer them breakfast in the morning. Almost always, this kind of hospitality is shown toward family or friends, people that we know and we're familiar with. But if we're asked to show this kind of hospitality to total strangers, or if someone shows up unexpectedly for us to host, then we're faced with a much different situation. We might show our guests around the house because they maybe haven't been there before and want to make sure they know where things are. We would maybe make some frantic attempts at cleaning or straightening up, or on the flip side, some of us would not be so stressed about those things. And because since we haven't had the time to prepare, we just go with the flow. But what does it feel like to be on the receiving end of generous hospitality. A stranger stops to change a tire when we're out in the middle of nowhere. A family opens up their home for us to stay in when we are alone in a foreign country. But hospitality might also, can also be shown in small but significant ways. We make a point to look at people in the eyes whenever we're talking to them, showing them that we're interested in what they're saying. We smile and say thank you to the clerk in the store or the security guard in our office building. Hospitality can be shared by anyone in a variety of ways. The question we have to answer is, what's keeping us from showing hospitality? Lots of things impede our ability to offer grace and welcome to others. Differences in culture, sociology, education, politics, and economics can prevent us from being hospitable. Personalities and past histories can conflict, and prideful stubbornness can shut us down to extending a welcoming hand. We may know it's important to be hospitable, but that doesn't mean it's easy to do. And yet, as children of the living God, we are hospitable because of the hospitality shown to us in Jesus Christ. God chose to extend God's grace freely and unconditionally, an act of welcome and grace which leads our lives as disciples of Jesus. When we come to this table and receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, we are witnesses to the boundless hospitality God has spread before us. It's because we are the recipients of this grace that we are then led to extend such grace to neighbors, to family, strangers, and to friends. Christine Pohl shares these thoughts on hospitality. Hospitality is not so much a task as it is a way of living our lives and sharing ourselves. Although it involves responsibility and faithful performance of duties, hospitality emerges out of a grateful heart. It's first a response of love and gratitude for God's love and welcome to us. We do not become good at hospitality in an instant. We learn it in small increments of daily faithfulness. Many people who practice hospitality describe it as the best and the hardest thing they've ever done. In their experience, its difficulty and its joy are close together. They find it to be the best thing because of how often they sense God's presence in that practice. But hospitality is difficult 
because it involves hard work. We insist on measurable results and completed tasks, but the results of hospitality are impossible to quantify, and the work of hospitality is rarely finished. And yet, offering welcome is basic to Christian identity and practice. Offering welcome is basic to our identity as Christians because, as we heard from Hebrews this morning, God has spoken to us by a son, and he is the exact imprint of God's very being. It is through Jesus that God shows God's exact imprint, and that imprint is stamped in each of our hearts. Whenever we lend a listening ear to a friend, we are reflecting God's hospitality and grace. Whenever we show a stranger around the church so that they might feel welcome, we are reflecting God's hospitality and grace. Whenever we offer assistance without any expectation of something being given in return, we're reflecting God's hospitality and grace. It might take some time. It might take some practice. But Christian hospitality is something we each have inside of us because we have the imprint of God in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. And sometimes we are called to show hospitality in the face of great chaos and grief and unprecedented disaster. As Debbie and I were having this amazing trip out west this last week, the hardest part of our time away was seeing what was happening back home here in our state. Just like we experienced tremendous awe in seeing Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks in person, there was tremendous shock and disbelief seeing pictures on the news and on social media of the complete destruction from the flooding from Hurricane Helene across our state. I cannot even imagine what it must be like to see that devastation firsthand. All of us have connections to this disaster in some way or another. We have family members or friends who have lost property, are living without power, water, or other necessities. And some of us may still be waiting to see if someone we love, to hear from someone that we care about. Many of us have spent time at Montreat Conference Center, and to see Lake Susan overflowing the dam, or to see water and mud rushing down Assembly Drive, it just hits to the core. Places where we have vacationed, towns that we have strolled through, and we have been welcomed with hospitality, they're gone. They're completely gone. It is so difficult to grasp the magnitude of what has happened. And in times like these, it can be hard to find the words to express what we're feeling, especially as people of faith. Many of you may have seen a prayer that was written by the Reverend Edwin Gonzalez Castillo, who is the director of Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. And some of his words of that prayer include the following. In these overwhelming moments of loss and devastation, 
we come to you, God of grace and compassion, with weary hearts that are both heavy and hopeful. By your grace, bring comfort to those who are grieving, give strength to the exhausted, and provide shelter for those who have lost everything. May your spirit move in this, your creation, bringing peace amid the turmoil and breathing hope into the places that feel broken. May your spirit continue to be the quiet but constant reassurance that you are with your children and your creation, even in the darkest moments, guiding us toward healing and restoration. As we continue to see the news, we lift up the brave souls who are working tirelessly to rescue and assist. Give strength and wisdom for the tax, tasks ahead and stir our hearts, dear God, to step in with compassion, helping our neighbors near and far with kindness, love, and compassion. Jesus Christ is the exact imprint of God. And in times like these, we see that imprint in the face, in the actions, and in the hospitality of God's children. I witness the imprint of God in the actions of so many seeking how best to help our neighbors. A colleague of mine in New Jersey who coordinated his church to collect donations of water and they brought a truckload of it this past week to First Presbyterian Church in Asheville. Other colleagues, other churches in Virginia, Charlotte, all over our region, organizing similar drives and bringing donations by the truckload. Collection drives organized by our own food drive kids, other churches in our presbytery and local efforts to raise money for the victims. All of these and more reflect the deep care we have for our fellow siblings in Christ. They reflect the imprint of God we all share as disciples of God's Son, an imprint that is reflected through the hospitality we share in Christ's name. Reverend Gonzalez Castillo concludes his prayer in this way. Restore what has been shattered and lead us toward a path of renovation, peace, and healing and the renewing power of your always present spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. In a world that is filled with chaos, war, and violence, may we not be afraid to extend a welcoming hand, a simple yet impactful way to offer renovation, peace, and healing. For whenever we do so, we are reflecting the welcoming grace God has extended to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
You may be seated. In response to God's love for us and God's word to us this day, let us offer back to God our lives and the gifts which we bring. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, and we give you thanks for the life you have given us in Jesus Christ. We bring back to you these fruits of our labors and ask that they might bring peace and joy and healing to those areas that have great need. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We come now to this table which our Lord has set before us. And before we offer, uh, we partake of this feast which he has prepared, I would invite us to hear and share joys and concerns that are part of our life together as a community of faith. We all are holding in prayer, in deep prayer, uh, the people in the western part of our state who have experienced great loss uh, and have great need. And I wanted to share with you two specific efforts from our congregation where you're invited, if you wish, at this time this week, if you wish to make donations and how they will help others in the western part of our state. Uh, the first is Larry Shelton and Brooks Burleson. Brooks is, the, is our stonemason who built the columbarium for us. They are going to be leaving at 9 o'clock Tuesday morning uh, to head to uh, Hickory. Is that right, Larry? to the App State uh, Extension Campus at Hickory uh, and to deliver any donations of food, water, diapers, whatever 
that are then being used from that place to be airlifted into some of the communities that still cannot have access because of roads. So if you have any interest in wanting to make donations for that, you can bring them to the church by 9 o'clock Tuesday morning, or if you have any questions, you can see Larry Shelton. Larry, raise your hand, and he will be happy to help you with that. The other effort that's being organized, I mentioned in my sermon, is from our food drive kids, and that's Alexander uh, and William Winslow and the, and the Clifford Winslow family. Um, they are supporting specific uh, ministries that are for food insecurity in the, mount, in the area. And they are also accepting donations. I don't have that. That list is on social media, but I would also, Blythe, would you raise your hand? Blythe, no. If you have any interest in wanting to support that, talk to Blythe or look on social media. And they are going to be collecting through Tuesday. So, Winter clothing, okay. 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 Anything at all, and, and they're going to be leaving Wednesday to take those up. But So donations can be accepted through Tuesday here at the church. So if you have any interest in wanting to support any of that, know that we will receive those, and we'll also try to get that out maybe in communications tomorrow just so that people can see those lists and know. There will continue to be more and more need, and we will continue to find the ways to support our neighbors in need. And as we do, and as we show that, we will share them with you and appreciate all that we are continuing to do. Other joys or concerns in our life together. I invite you to remember Bobby Cross's grandson, Kieran, who's seven months old. He had an ultrasound on his kidneys this past week. Um, and asked, Bobby asked for prayers for Christy and Casey, his parents, as they await uh, follow-up news from that this coming week. Um, Gail Clayton, who's a friend and neighbor of Mike and Barbara McIntyre, um, is a former member. Is she, she had been hospitalized, I know. Is she, is she still in the hospital? Okay. So she's been able to come home and, and is recuperating at home. We're grateful to hear that. Um, and we continue to remember uh, the Reese family, Bobby and Mike Reese and their entire family, uh, as they mourn the death of Jean Reese. Uh, Jean died on September 24th. Um, Jean was a longtime member of our congregation. And we will celebrate his life in a service on Saturday, October 26th at 11 o'clock a.m. here in the sanctuary. Uh, we'll be sure to share more details as we get closer to that, but please continue to hold them in your prayers. And we, on this... World Communion Sunday, we remember all places in our world that are experiencing violence and poverty and war and unrest, and we ask for God's peace to come. Are there others whom you had mentioned that we might hold them in our prayers, and we'll be happy to bring a microphone to you? Yes, Ron. Okay. Where is, where is she? Which part? Westchester. Westchester, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Yeah. Ron gives thanks that his sister, who's in Westchester, was able to have power restored. But as many, many in those areas, the, probably the hardest thing they're dealing with right now is the fact that they will not have water for s several weeks. Uh, it's still unknown. And so our prayers are with them. Are there others? We hold all of these in our prayers this day. In the early hours of the morning, while all was quiet and dark here at our home, the sun was rising on the other side of the world. And with the dawn of this new day, God's people began gathering for worship amid the sounds of drums or pipes, stringed instruments or pianos and organs. And now we too join in this worldwide chorus of those who call upon the name of the Lord. On this World Communion Sunday, we remember especially that the scriptures are fulfilled 
as people will come from east and west and from north and south and will sit at table in God's heavenly kingdom. So come today, not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are strong, but because you seek God's strength. All of those who trust in Jesus Christ are invited to come and join in this feast which God has prepared. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise for you looked upon all your hands wrought and called it good. You smile upon purple mountains soaring above wildflower plains where grasses raise their backs to meet your spirit's caress. You send clouds scuttling across reflective waters and set stars to wink upon the earth in deep, knowing delight. As giraffes amble across savannas, birds sing in full-throated praise, and children of various hues giggle as they run free in your image. Despite your created goodness, we use our freedom for ourselves alone without regard for your intentions for all. Still, you chase after us to save us from sin's harm, freeing us from slavery to give us a new world flowing with milk and honey. When we chase after other gods, you call us back to you through cries of prophets, which we ignore until at last you send your own child to be for us the goodness we refuse. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choir of creation and all the saints of all times and places who forever sing to the glory of your name. Blessed are you, O Christ, for coming to us as a little child to live baptized in the muck of our fallen world, embodying God's desire to bless all people. You spoke peace to warmongering empire and were blessed to be a blessing to all people. When threatened with the terror of crucifixion, you did not keep silent, but stood up with resurrection new life to turn the bread of human affliction into manna from heaven and to turn the bitter dregs of sin into the cup of joyful celebration. So as we await your coming among us in the fullness of your sovereign glory, we proclaim the mystery of faith. be you, Holy Spirit, blowing through time to enliven your people, the church, to live as Christ's body in God's ministry of repairing our broken world. Come hover over us now with your bright brooding wings in the breaking of bread and in the celebration of this cup, that our eyes may be opened to recognize Christ among us and in all who share in this feast. Knit us more closely together in the fellowship of your sovereign way. We offer ourselves, our lives, our resources 
to be your hands reaching into the world with your unfathomable compassion. Fill us like breath fills flutes to be instruments of your peace. Gather all these prayers and praise and join them with those of all the saints now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus was at table with his disciples. After giving thanks, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup he said, this cup is the new covenant which is sealed in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes.
the body of Christ given for us all.
these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Help us rise in your resurrection power, O God, from this table where you, ruler of the universe, have served us by your own hand, that we may extend your arms of peace to a world at war. This we ask through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. May all honor and glory and dominion be yours now and forever. Amen. Remember, you're invited to join us in the fellowship hall uh, for a special lunch. You can consider this the blessing. Don't wait on me. <laughs> Friends, go from this place in peace. Trust and serve the Lord. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always. Amen. Amen.